my name is Gail. Um, I'm the co-founder of a company called 50 in Tech. We are working on making the tech industry and the tech, uh, tech workforce more uh, balanced, uh, working with more inclusivity, more diversity. And since um, the beginning of the pandemic, we've been organizing a lot of uh, workshops, a lot of uh, webinars to, to discuss with all the women working women uh, working in tech especially of course not only people who are founder people oh, who are okay i will mute again everyone um so all the people um and all the ladies who need some um, some help to meeting oh, julie as well uh, to, to, to feel great, to get um, a nice uh, networking, to, to find uh, people to discuss with and to grow their career or their business. Um, if you're not yet registered on 15 Tech and you think you need to grow your network or if you think um, that you will be needing up... Sorry, Laura. I love the toilets flushing, it's the best. Yeah, I mean, we're just like all together. It's kind of family, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, I mean, since the beginning. Laurie, Laurie de Souza, can you please um, mute your, oh no, your mic is, uh, it's not, sorry. Someone has a, a microphone open. Oh yeah, here. Um, yeah, it's been very like uh, a little, chatting group uh, super informal so that was uh, that was quite fun um so yeah i was talking about 15 tech if you are not yet registered want to meet a lot of um, professional ladies if you feel that uh, at some point you want to be a founder entrepreneur just log in the platform it's free you can meet a lot of nice people get a lot of advice a lot of resources um to just uh, you know grow your career in a nice way. So um, talking about the situation of women uh, during the pandemic, I found very interesting uh, statistic uh, about uh, the like family burnout. So I'm just going to share it with, we, with you and then we'll discuss with, um, with Lucille about uh, how we can find time to, to feel better and to just take care of ourselves because I know that the ladies have uh, uh, at some point um, left uh, themselves behind the, the rest of the things they were supposed to do. So um, the data I have is that 74% of millennials, um, I'm still inviting people to join, uh, with at least one child at home, say they are stressed at work now. And that's according to a new uh, survey in the US who's been interviewing uh, 1,000 US workers. And that was a, a study for, for LinkedIn. Um, another data is like the number one factor behind the burnout for women in particular is teaching school aged children at home while working. Uh, another funny fact is that uh, another study from the New York Times has been saying that main men were feeling they were doing 80% of the homeschooling at home, uh, which is quite funny because uh, ladies were actually thinking they were doing 45% that they're more stressed. Um, you also know that uh, with the major layoff that has been starting in the US, but also in the UK, uh, women are more impacted. Uh, they wait for 55% of the layoff so meaning that the men are only counting for 45%. So women have been very, very stressed during the lockdown and the pandemic, and it's not going to stop because uh, we don't really know how things are going in the, in the next few months, but probably um, it's going to be tough for everyone um, with the economic uh, drop, uh, with all the layoff. So Lucille, I think we really need your help to feel better. So just to give you a little bit of history, um, I know Lucille and Marion, who's working with Lucille as a general manager for now three years, I think. I experienced myself a kind of burnout and at some point I needed some fresh air and so I decided to join uh, one of the surf camp organized with Lucille and Marion and I had a super great time there. 
um, was super good with Lucille and um, and her methodology is uh, like she's not forcing you to make a lot of effort like some youtuber are doing like uh, you have to get this lovely body you have to be super shaved super fit you have to um, you know practice so much every day and and with Lucille it's uh you have to just be happy uh, with who you are and enjoy um, doing some exercise enjoy eating good food and that's um, I think that's a great methodology to feel nice Lucille I think it's uh, your turn now uh, you have to unmute <laughs> there you go is yeah. it that can you hear me now yeah we can yeah ah, okay thank you so much for uh, for inviting us today to talk about well-being and about business um it, it's funny because uh, marion and i we come from both a very different background and uh well i am nearly 40 i have two kids now and marion is uh, young and free <laughs> with no kids she lives <laughs> in berlin i live in the outskirts of paris you know totally different lifestyle but we both totally agree on um you know how we should handle the well-being um because it's not a question of uh, you know you have to do this you have to do that it's more about how you imply it into your own life how you take some little things that suit you and put it into your own way of living um so I don't know, there is a lot of meanings of well-being, you know, well-being can, can mean a lot of things and, uh, uh, you know, it could be from wealth to health to yoga to crazy herbs drinking, you know. So everyone has its own vision of well-being. Um, for me, the well-being for the first thing is to be healthy, you know, to be not with a disease. For me, it's the biggest uh, definition of, uh, of uh, well-being, of feeling well, of being well, is to not have a disease. And uh, by disease, I mean not necessarily a flu or coronavirus, you know, but, um, you know, not living with, uh, not putting a lot of disease inside you. There is so many diseases that we can avoid in life, um, you know, cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, a lot of diseases that you can um, not have when you are 50, 60, 70 years old. So this is mostly this. And also about being well, it's about being well in your head, being well in your body, not necessarily looking like someone perfect, but feeling good about yourself. And it's the hardest because it's so hard to feel good about yourself. I don't know why it's been so difficult forever, you know, just to feel good about yourself. Maybe it's because of our religion background or maybe it's the cultural background, you know, just admitting that you feel good about yourself is totally taboo and uh, Marion and I we are trying to break this taboo by helping people to eat well to do sports but in a you know in a natural way and um, this is mostly our vision of uh, well-being you know coaching people mentally to feel good about themselves with a healthy lifestyle and um, a lot of uh, self-confidence mostly Thank you. So uh, just to giving the like rules of how this uh, workshop is going to, to work, I've been muting all the microphones for now, uh, because otherwise it's going to be too, too crowded. Please ask your question using the, um, the chat area and I will call you and then you can open your mic and, uh, and ask your question. Or if you're too shy, I can ask it for you. Don't, uh, don't, don't bother. We've got uh, Ilaria, who's uh, our community manager here as well, who can uh, ask the question for you. Um, so Lucy, what, what is to you um, the like uh, two, three main things to, to keep in mind when we leave um, a, a time of a certainty like where we are in right now and we feel we don't have I mean, no bandwidth anymore to take care of that or ourselves. What and can no, we it, it's, been, it's been very, very difficult for me because I was the total, uh, you know, the exact definition of what you said, you know, the women who are so like 75 more stress in their life because of the child being at home and 
no, not uh, going to school, homeschooling, uh, home working, home cooking, home sporting, home, home, home everything. And it's been so stressful. And uh, I have had uh, lots of difficulty myself because um, uh, I don't know, it's not at all my lifestyle, you know, I put the kids to school and then I go to work and then, you know, I have lots of compartments in my life, you know, the mm -hmm. school, the work, the sports, you know, and there in one minute it was all at home and it was very stressful. So I totally understand. And what helped me a lot was to accept that this new life for how long it was, was full of uncertainty. You know, the certainty was uncertainty. And uh, it's been, it's helped me, you know, every time I thought, oh, what I'm going to do like this, like this, I can't live like this. I was like, you know, now there is a lot of uncertainty and it's okay. And, you know, I'm struggling. It's okay. You know, just to, to feel normal about not liking this way of life or feeling bad about it or feeling stressed, just accepting all these feelings. It's helped me a lot. Um, talking about it a lot too with my mother, with my uh, friends. So some friends are okay with this situation, so I don't call them. And some friends are really angry with the situation, so I call them a lot and then we bitch about the situation. And it just, it doesn't make the world better, but it makes you feel better, you know, just to complain in between people who like to complain with the situation. Um, so some friends can be very helpful too. So yeah, just accepting things. And, um, and then the sports has helped me a lot, uh, you know, taking my own little time. Um, it's funny because we've had a lot of time at home, but so stressed and so many things to do at home that we, are, we can so easily forget about ourselves and forget about our own time, you know, mm -hmm. because the kids are more at home and they demand, they demand lots of time. And, so take your little time, maybe it's only 20 minutes of yoga or, I don't know, stretching or a little bit of cycling, I don't know. Even 20 minutes is good. There's never not enough of sport. Even 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's always a good thing. So doing lots of sports has helped me to go through this time. And um, the good food too, you know, because it's so easy to feel stressed, feel stressed, eat, eat, eat. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, when the lockdown, I was drinking so much alcohol with my husband, you know, every, every evening we thought, oh, it's wine o'clock, you know, let's go. It's six. We can do it now. Crack open the bottle. Oh, the a bottle is already finished. Crack open a new one. Yeah. You know, heard that. Heard it's already in our cellar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, so. raise, raise your hands here if you've been doing the same. <laughs> It's yeah, okay, okay. You know, oh, yeah. So many, yeah. <laughs> Lots of many. Yeah. And also accepting this too was, you know, I accept, you know, I've had a hard time. I need to, you know, relax. And the fact that I came to terms with the situation of uncertainty, it's helped me a lot to also diminish my need of, um, you know, alcohol and relax like this. So. For me, it was like accepting that I am not perfect, that I don't, that I don't come well with the situation. Just accepting it was okay. And then talking about not accepting it, good food and a little bit of sports. It's been really some, some things that really helped me. So what, what kind of um, like uh, maybe indoor activities? I know that now we can go out again, but I know that... Uh... For the mum uh, who are here and have uh, oh, still kids not going to school, I'm in this situation. My kids are going to school just uh, one week uh, out of once two. a week. Yeah. No, no, it's like one week with school, one week without school. Um, mm. So I mean, I'm I'm still super busy with homeschooling. I know that I'm not the only one. And so, what would you recommend for like doing sports at home? Do you need to to get special equipment? Um, do you recommend to, to, to go to YouTube and get videos or just, uh, I don't know, anything we prefer? Yeah, well, equipment, no, you don't need any equipment. You know, even sometimes I can do sports with even, not even a mat, you know, you can do anything, even just barefoot, it's good. You don't need any equipment. Um, just you need, you need to tell the people around you, so either kids, your husband, your friends, it's my time, I need it. 
and whatever happens now is my time you know so i think that's a you really need to take it and um, and then yeah youtube videos they are great there have been so many uh, live instagram live youtube live whatever uh, so yeah anything is good you know there is not a good spot or a bad spot anything is good uh, the most important is to go into a level that suits you because it's very tempting to follow a fitness coach that is you know showing a super amazing body and telling you to do this crazy stuff and this crazy stuff to do the same to have the same i've seen a lot of instagram lives with totally crazy levels which would be even very very challenging for me as a professional and uh, you know 40,000 50,000 80,000 people were following it at the same time and there were not 80,000 people professional so yeah it, a lot of people have hurt themselves, back, shoulders, wrists. It's a shame. Uh, so yeah, try to go to a very a level that is really easy. Because first of all, when it's easy, you feel good about yourself. Again, you know, it's always, always the same thing. Feel good about yourself. So if you do an easy workout, you think, oh, you know, I've done this workout. I felt good. It was not too challenging. I, I managed it and I feel good about it, you know? So already that's good. And then keep doing it so easy. And then maybe a little bit, go a little bit harder every week, every month, but go to an easy one that suits your level of uh, physical uh, capacity. Um, and then if you want more, usually always go to a, a very short video, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then, because the hardest is to start. Starting sports is always hard, but once you're in it, you can do 15, 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, very easily like this. So always start with a small one, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then, oh, well, you know, I may as, you know, I'm already changed. I've already started, so I may as well just keep going, do another one, and then, oh, maybe a third one. Yeah. So usually it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to, to start with. But I would like to know what Marion thinks, because she's, um, she, she's, in the other side of life, you know, the free life, and, <laughs> the, um, but, but very hard working, you know, very long hours, very hard working. And, um, and she's not a professional like me, like into sports, because for me, the sport is so easy. You know, I, I love sport. It's my life. So I always want to go. But I'd like to know what Marion says about it, because, um, you know, it's not her life to do the sports. And please, other people, uh Please comment in the in the chat as well. Ask your questions. It's uh, it's really a chat that we're having today. So, so Marion. All right. Uh, so for me, I think the situation was a bit different because, of course, I don't have kids, so I don't have like other people to take care of. So at least it was easier for me on this uh, on this way. Um, so what was difficult was to find uh, for me for the sport part like a new routine because I was going. I'm I'm not really good at watching uh, videos uh, online uh, to to do sports like that's my bad <laughs> because that's our business. But uh, I, it's hard for me to for my personal time like do sport like through like uh, YouTube videos. So I prefer to go out and go for for some clubs. So I go to like hits classes and this kind of stuff, or I'm going to the swimming pool, and nothing of this was possible during like the lockdown period so it was like a, a full stop of my uh, routine um so like the first weeks it was like no sport at all and then i started okay um in berlin i was able to go out so um, so i decided to go out for running because it was like super important for me like to to go and uh, like take some hair and uh, be uh, out of uh, of home um, I started like to do like uh, online classes uh, for fitness with Lucille, but uh, with other persons too, uh, like yoga classes, for example. Um, so for me, like it was important to find a new routine and keep like a structured uh, day uh, because I'm used to work from home. But uh, because uh, for, for the ones that don't know me, uh, I'm working uh, at home uh, when I'm in Berlin and I'm working at the office when I'm in Paris. So I'm pretty used to work like from home uh, and I think like finding uh, a way to structure your your day is super important because at first you are okay I will just start working and that's it but you don't have like hours nobody will say to you okay you need to stop now um, so that's 
super difficult for a lot of people. So um, what I did before the lockdown was like uh, going out every morning, for example, for yoga classing outside of home. And then I started my, uh, my work day. And then, for example, I was attending other sessions of, uh, of sport or like lunch with friends uh, at noon. And then again, like work from home. And uh, at six, I was like going out for like dinner parties or like sports, depends of the of the day. But not something like this was really possible during the lockdown. So I, I think like the most difficult things was to find a, a way to to differentiate like the personal time and the, the professional time, like staying home in the same area, in the same room, uh, like that was a bit difficult. So what I did is was like starting like cooking, so going to the kitchen and not being uh, again in my living room, for example. Um, yeah, I think. Marion, I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but uh, your sound is a... Uh... Robot voice. Yeah. Can you can you speak again? No, it's a robot voice. Maybe your your headphones. Are... Okay. Do you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Probably low battery. No, I think I just got cold. I think it shut down everything. Uh, yeah. So I was thinking just about like finding your routine, but I think. It was like true during this lockdown period, but also true like for now. If you are like an entrepreneur, you need also to find your routine because otherwise, yeah, you spend all your like time working and you don't like take time for yourself. So um, other advice I could give, for example, as an organization was um, uh, I don't differentiate like my to-do list from my private uh, to-do list or my professional to-do list. I just write down everything I need to do and I do it during the, wo the, the working day. Otherwise, I don't manage to do like uh, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like personal, if I need to, I don't know, to go to the bank for my, for my personal life or if I need to go to the hairdresser. Um, before, I was just pushing this after the working hours, but I never managed to do them because I was working like like 60 hours per, per week so at the end everything was closed and when I was like going out it was not possible to take any appointment or anything so I think one advice could be also like have your routine but you integrate uh, in your uh, like daily routine all the things you have to do and it could be like work but also like personal stuff and I think it's really important to to manage to do to do that yeah I, um we, we don't have yet questions. People are very shy today. So really don't hesitate to, to write down your question if you have one for Lucille or Marion. Ah, we, we have the first question. But just before that, I would like to, to speak about the power of the community because uh, that's one, size, uh, one side of uh, your methodology, building this um, amazing community of people, um, encouraging each other to, to continue. Um, what can you know how can we profit from benefit from 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 that yeah the community is, has always been a, a great value to follow an objective and to rely on other people's energy um, for me the, the community is always a great motivator you can find people who are like you identify yourself with people who are like you and um, share some difficulties find some tips with people who have exactly the same life as you you know because some people say oh no but i have three kids i don't have two kids so it's harder and then in the community you can find someone who has three kids or someone says oh well i have a knee problem you know and in the community you can find someone who has a knee problem who has uh, managed to keep on doing some uh, sports and and good food or i don't know so it the community always is great and also the the, the the power of a, of a new start. This is why we do our programs like we do. You know, we always have like new times of starting a program, you know, like the summer program, and then I don't know, the, the September program, and uh, I don't know, the winter program. You know, we always have like different times because that we have seen that every time we, we engage a big start, 
a lot of people are doing the same and it, it, it really encourages a lot of people to follow it and to, to start this new pathway or to restart, 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 restart again, a new pathway of feeling good about yourself, eating well, doing some sports and having a positive mental mindset. So I find that this is very important to rely on a community, whether it's a real community, like people who do yoga class with you in your same area where you live, or a virtual community, like on the Facebook group, for example. Yeah. Um, whatever the community is, uh, even if it's a, like two, three friends on a WhatsApp group, oh, I've run today, did you run today? No, I will run tomorrow. Or oh, Strava, you know, like competing community, I don't know. Any time of, any kind of community is very important to make you keep doing it, show the, uh, see some examples, positive examples, and follow the, it the same way as you. And um, what we love about our community that we have created with uh, Marion, we have such a, um, a positive community that you know make people feel good about themselves it's very important and at the beginning of the lockdown we saw a little bit of uh, negativity going on with people sharing about going out and some people you know judging them and and it was kind of negative and not so well um, and so uh, we had to you know re re-explain re the rules of our community that it's all based on positivity encouraging any kind of effort any kind of um, feeling good about yourself and uh, it, it was much better um, so it's very important to have a community and to always make sure that this community goes um, on the same path as you okay so we don't uh, I'm, I'm reading at the same time yeah we've got a question from Sabine Brugner maybe Sabine you want to open your microphone and and ask it. Hey, I'm Sabine from Germany. I'm French living in Germany. I've been following your program many, many years. Uh, I, I really love your inspiration. I'm, I prefer the um, local program like my yoga class, but your inspiration have been very important for me. I'm just wondering where are the men? There are many, um, sport programs where there are only men like running you only find men and for the well-being i'm just wondering where are, where are they and i think it's uh, very important that we are an inspiration for our families too and so we need your support but also for the men <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky question because at first we were like aiming to propose program for everyone, but in terms of like communication and marketing, it's always difficult like to talk to a lot of different persons. And most of the, the women that are like, like reaching us, at first they just want to lose weight. And it's something like very typical um, for women and not very interesting for most of the men because they don't have this issue of just a little of them have this issue. And when you talk about well-being, they think most of them that it's a bit bullshit and they don't care about uh, the like stress management or sleep better or eat better. It's topics uh, that are like difficult uh, for, for us to address to some, to some men. But what we saw is that uh, most of our customers are women. But at the end, like they are making the program for the whole family because our programs are made for everyone. So at the end, it's the same uh, advices, it's the same um, um, menu, it's the same like uh, sports sessions. Uh, everybody can follow, follow them because it's not a particular diet, it's just advice that are like uh, good sense advice, advices. Um, so at the end, if your husband wants to follow, there is no issue because it's it's exactly the same advices that can apply to 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 them but for us in terms of communication it's more like difficult to address them because like our audience on social networks are like 95 persons women um so we decided like to talk directly to women because it's easier but at the end we know that in our community we have some men that are super happy to follow and uh, don't find it difficult because uh, like even if we're talking about like, uh, I don't know, like uh, mental load or this kind of, uh, of uh, topic, uh, some of them are like super open-minded and, uh, and interested by this topic too. So, so yeah, we're not like uh, totally close to, to men. <laughs> yeah, and also um, for, the, for, the, 
for the sports and the food, I've noticed that most men, are, but also like women, people want to follow a model. You know, they want to follow someone that they can, you know, they they, they look up to, and uh, you know, they want to follow. And um, mostly, when I speak with men, I don't like to say women are like this, men are like that, but most of the time uh, when we talk to men about sports and good food they want to look like a superhero you know they want to look up to a superhero a supermodel a man who is very competitive who has an amazing performance and um, you know my husband for example you know he wants to to lose weight or to lose weight or to feel good or to improve his running, he goes to Strava, you know, and he, he looks at his chrono and he looks at, oh, you know, I'm 20th of the whole region in this run, you know, this is how lots, uh, this is how lots of men um, react. And um, for us, talking about men, talking to men about um, well-being, not self-judgment, no competitiveness, is difficult because this is not m how most men model speak to men and this is not what men would react positively to even if this it's what they need i don't need it's not what they, they need no competitiveness they need to feel good about themselves but it's harder to communicate to men in this um, area and i think that men are lacking a lot of role models in this area they need men who are sporty but not too competitive they need models but they need men models like this and they are hard to find even myself i, I have found it very difficult to to find a, a men model that is not too much into the competition or you know high performance looking better than everyone else or so it's you know similar. It's quite already. similar as in the, and the, as, uh, in the you know, job life everywhere. It's always kind of the same. But however, Ka Caroline Herman is saying that uh, her husband or, or partner is uh, following the program. So Sabine, don't hesitate. We, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> we, we, are, we, are, we have a lot, of this, um, a lot of examples like this. You know, the women start and then they, they cook for themselves, for their children, and then for their husband, who at the beginning says, mm, I don't like all these lentils. And then after one or two meals, oh, I slept so well last night after eating your meal. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they start, they try, and they feel good about themselves. They feel good inside themselves. And then they think, hmm, maybe, maybe it's a good thing. Or, you know, and, and then maybe one day they will listen to one of our um, audio run, you know, and they have never run like this in their whole lives, you know, with that competitiveness and just feeling good about being active. So... It's, it's, it's hard to address to men, but by addressing women and their family, we are addressing men in that, you know, modified term. Because even Marion's boyfriend now, he's making some little germs of uh, uh, lentils, you know, and he's eating them. And, you know, so even she managed to make him think in another way. <laughs> so it's possible. We've got many questions arriving. So I would like to call Elizabeth, who's uh, now just... Like early pregnant, so congrats, Elizabeth Bozem. Can you open your microphone or do you want yes. me? Yeah, yeah. Hi. hi, nice to meet you. Hi, so I'm Elizabeth, a French married to a German, living in Germany. And um, yeah, I have a new adventure uh, before me because um, for a uh, it's a few weeks ago I, I learned that I was uh, pregnant. It was really a surprise because in this time we were not uh, expecting it. And so it is a big challenge for me in matter of um, keeping up with my routine and with my well-being because beforehand I have started, uh, I started the summer program uh, from, from Lucille. Uh, two years ago and I was so motivated and so in it and then suddenly my my body uh, told me 
uh, just stop. You're sleeping all the time. You can do nothing. You're just sleeping. You need to sleep, so sleep. And, and it's uh, really frustrating to realize that you don't have the levels of energy you would like to uh, do all the things you because I learned to feel good about myself when I do sports, when I, uh, I'm i running, when I'm taking long walks, because it was I was not used to that. But then suddenly uh, my body say, stop, and I'm completely lost. <laughs> so I pick up some yoga videos from Lucille, old ones for yoga during uh, the pregnancy. They're really good. But right now, uh, yes, Matter of well-being is really important, but I, I don't know what to do. Yes. Can I can I answer? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's amazing. It's it, what will help you is to accept that pregnancy is a little, you know, parenthèse in we say in mm -hmm. French, but you know, like a little time lapse in your life uh, where everything is different and that sure the certainty is uncertainty there is no rules in pregnancy every pregnancy is different even in your body if you have two or three kids you will see there is not one pregnancy the same there is not one kid the same so first of all you have to accept that everything will be different for the next nine months and then after you give birth another good maybe four or five months of uncertainty again so it's a long year of uncertainty for sure to come um, you have to accept that you know you carry life and your body has to adapt uh, especially the first pregnancy it's very sudden you don't recognize your body you don't understand so just come to terms that it's normal you are tired it's normal you feel pain maybe in your abdominals it's normal everything is normal um, I don't know, it's, uh, sometimes you feel great today, oh, today I have very lots of energy, you know, I feel good, and the next morning you will feel shit, like hungover, even if you didn't drink alcohol. For me, I had a hungover all pregnancy every morning, with not drinking. <laughs> so, you know, you have to accept this. Um, it's hard in the beginning, but don't worry. It's, it, will, it will go through very smoothly, very nicely. Keep doing some light sport if you want to, but if you don't feel like it, it's okay to not do sports in your pregnancy if you don't feel like it. Maybe just walk or just, I don't know, do a bit of yoga. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was the same when I was pregnant. I was always very tired. I was only able to do very limited amount of exercise, like 20 minutes swimming. Oh, I was already so tired. So, you know, you have to, to accept. Some women feel very active in their pregnancy, but it's not, it doesn't mean that it should be you. You know, you don't have to be the same. Some women are very tired. It's, it's okay too, you know. You, you, pregnancy, there, are, there is no rule. Some people put a lot of weight and then lose it all. Some mm -hmm. people don't put much weight. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, don't, don't stress. Already it's stressful to be pregnant. So, don't stress too much about sports when you are pregnant. If you can do, do. If you can't, it's okay. Um, we, we still have many questions to, to ask and the time is, uh, is running already. So we have a question from Marie Evera, I think. Oh, I know her. <laughs> ah. Marie? Marie, uh, I have to mute. Yeah, now, now you can hear me, right? Yeah, she wants to talk about nutrition, and I think you have many advice to give about uh, nutrition. Marie. Yeah. Hello, Lucille, Marion. How are you? Um, yeah, I was. Um, I mean, uh, my question was about the, the lockdown period. I mean, I, I live in Luxembourg, um, and here the we've been de locked down a little bit earlier than France, but I'm still home working. So, I mean, the. the it's, it's pretty much the same. So basically for me, I mean, sports was okay. We were even able to go out for a run or a bike ride every day. Um, what really changed for me was the eating uh, habits because uh, I, um, 
I, I mean, I, 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 I've adopted the 80% healthy, 20% trash of Lucille and all these things. But the fact that I was at home, I was less hungry. So at the beginning, I was eating the same. And then I was kind of super, feeling super big, kind of uh, inflated like a balloon. And then, uh, I, then I started also to do some, um, um, how do you say in, in English, this uh, fasting, I mean, which I, I normally do also uh, uh, even before lockdown. But then I think I was going too far. So, I mean, it was a whole mess. And I completely lost my feelings of, uh, you know, hunger and uh, quantities. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, for me, I, I have the feeling that the lockdown uh, really screwed up this uh, kind of habits I had. And now I'm really struggling to, to, to find them back. So if you have any tips. You're I'm... struggling to find them back because you feel hungry all the time or because you don't, you don't know? Because I'm, uh, no, I don't feel hungry, but sometimes I, I would, uh, I have the feeling I ate too much. So on the next day, uh, I'm eating much less and then I'm hungry again. <laughs> and then I will kind of do this kind of uh, compulsive eating of, uh, I mean, healthy stuff, but too much quantity, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, almond butter and bread and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. and this is my Nutella uh, trash, would say, uh, kind of healthy, but not great either. Yeah, so, uh, I think it's, it's, been, it's yeah, been a I, lot I of... Uh, there's no there's been a lot of stress going on and a lot of our relation to food is related to stress you know it, it comes from our childhood our education you know um, uh, even i try to not do it but sometimes with my kids you know oh, if you finish well your homework then you can have dessert at lunch all the things you should not do but you still do because you know you have no idea of how to motivate your kid to do homeschooling or things like this so yeah i think there's been a lot of stress relation you know you've been homeworking and then think oh you know I've, I've worked well so i deserve a little bit of food and then you feel hungry and not hungry and you don't do as much activity or you know because even if you do some sports just the fact that you are not walking to the office yeah. or yeah. you know taking a bit of transport or i don't know you are still less active in a not not sporty way but just in the you know it's called in the neat the the not energetic um energy the not athletic energy uh, transformation or something like this you know you have not done it you know a little bit of standing up for a meeting or everything's like this energy spent so um, definitely you are less active you feel less hunger and there is a lot of stress so again accepting that this period is different as the normal life helps a lot and you've talked about the fasting sometimes when you feel that you never know when you are hungry or when you are uh, satisfied with the food Fasting, even for like 14 hours, 16 hours, can help a lot to refill the real sensation of when I am hungry, when I am not hungry. Um, the best fasting being in the night, like in the evening, not eating at the meal, at the dinner meal, rather than breakfast. Um, so yeah, this can help too. But sometimes it's true that when you fast and you are so hungry that you eat too much and then it completely desynchronizes everything. So. It's not easy, and I've talked to a lot of people uh, that have undergone the same kind of feeling, so it's not easy. Remind yourself that it's not a period that will last forever. Things will go back to normal, and you will have a, a normal rhythm again in your life. Um, if you stay in a healthy food, even if you do a little bit of too much eating, it's much better than anything else. Uh, binge on fruits. Fruits are the best binge eating ever. Fruits and water. It fills your stomach. And at some point, we will have a normal life again. But I would say, you know, for, for a little bit of an outside conversation, we've always said, uh, we've said a lot lately that homeworking, homeworking is so good. All the Parisian people or the, the big city people are going to move to the suburbs or to the country to do homeworking, homeworking. It's not so, so, so good all the time, you know. You need a little bit of normal 
life, working, going to places, have a rhythm day with rhythm hours because you see there is a lot of other problems that come to life uh, after a while. So it's not all good, the homeworking. Um, we have Victoria from Cyprus who was um, yeah, requesting some uh, maybe information about the optimal number of steps. Victoria, do you want to ask your questions? Uh, merci, Gal. Thank you. Um, hi, Lucille. Uh, so as you were touching upon the, you know, the, the, the routine of walking and yes, how work from home is not ideally suited to maintain our fitness regime, you know, often we feel the stress that, uh, you know, hey, our phone shows only 3,000 steps today, you know, like, uh, do we need to push ourselves and reach the 10,000? Because many are talking that 10,000 steps per day is like uh, for maintaining the vitality and, uh, let's say, body shape. Or uh, would you say that uh, even less is, is okay as long as maybe it's, I don't know, three or four or five? Uh, because um, I think uh, it would be good to, to understand, is this a myth or the truth? Thank you. It's a truth, it's truth. Uh, 10,000 steps is, it's, it's a good um, average for showing you, showing you if you have been active today or not active mm -hmm. today. But it should not be a stress factor, mm -hmm. one more stress factor in your life, you know. Uh, and also, for example, if you do an hour of yoga, even very intense yoga, it would not count as steps, but it's very good for you. So, you know, it's, it's a good measure, but it's not a perfect measure. Um, and sometimes one day you will do 15,000 steps and one day 3,000, you know, because maybe it was Sunday and you went for a long walk with your family and then the next day it's Monday and you don't walk. So it's a good average measure. It should not be, it should not be a stress factor and it's it's it, it, it's all these measures you know it's like 2000 calories per day it's also a good average but it should not be stressed you know all these massive rules like these they are interesting but not perfect so take it like it's if it's good for you you know if, if it's if it's just a reminder for you or you know it's been already three days in a row that i've not walked a lot maybe i should do exercise that's good, but it's a stress factor for you. Just leave it and do something else, you know. Um, everybody has different ways of reacting to rules or to, um, to little hints of uh, well-being. So, I don't know, for me, for example, these rules, I don't, I don't really use it because sometimes I do yoga, sometimes I do <clears throat> hardcore weights, fitness, and it doesn't count the steps, but I've done like really heavy um, weights. So. I don't really use these 10,000 uh, steps as, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, Marion, maybe, do you, do you use it? Because you have a watch, yeah? yeah I have the watch too. Um, the thing is, it really depends also if I'm in Paris or if I take the plane, I'm working a lot during the day. If I'm at home, it's super hard like to reach like more than 3,000 uh, mm. uh, steps by, per day. So I think, it's like everything. It's like a balance. Uh, it's and it's true for food. It's true for exercise. It's true for stress or for sleep. Um, you can find like some measures like given by a lot of people, but at the end, it's what is working the better for you. So, if you if the if it's the only exercise that you're doing every every day, of course, it would be nice to reach like every day the ten thousand steps because it means that you had like uh, a balanced exercise during the the day. But if you're doing other sport, other activities, and you're super active, that doesn't mean a lot. Uh, so I think it's kind of a balance. You need to find what's the right amount of acti uh, sportive activities you need per day or per week and and stick to it because it's what works the best for you. Um, so I, I think it really depends on the people and it's the same for food and calories. Like you can read, okay, a normal woman needs like 2000 calories per, per day, blah, blah, blah. But it really depends. Some people, they eat less or more. Depends also of uh, how much activities they have during the day. So if you are super active, like uh, staying up all day, it's not the same as sitting in front of a desk uh, like for eight hours. So. Um, everything it's kind of a balance and it's what we explain in our program it's like 
how to find your balance that works for you on the long term because you can force yourself like for one month to work like this uh, 10,000 step per day but can you manage like for your whole life probably not because like depending of the day of um, if you're on holiday if you're at work everything is different like uh, your, your life's not always the same so um, so I think you need to find it's not measure but okay what amount of uh, activities or sports you need per day to feel well in your body and in your head and like stick to to this i think it's the best measurement you can uh, you could find um we are almost uh well yeah eight minutes from uh, the hour of chat that um, was scheduled so i'm going to ask uh, mary uh, without any last name questions because i think it's quite interesting uh, she was asking uh, do you have any advice for 60 plus years old women can we start the sport if we haven't practiced younger? So I will say here, I'm not sure we have so many 60 plus uh, women here, but I think there are many people who probably haven't practiced a lot when they were younger and are maybe more mature. major. So what um, do you advise to maybe go back to sport and feel energized? Yeah, yeah, of course. There is never a bad time to start sports again, never a bad age. You can always start to feel better at any age. And even scientific studies have shown that even when you are 70 years old, never done sports or eating too well, and you start at 70 years old, then you diminish your risk of uh, developing some cancer, some brain disease, or even uh, cardiovascular diseases, even at the age of 70. And even my father, for example, who, is, uh, who has a cardiac uh, disease, you know, he has stents in his uh, aerals and uh, some, some coronaries. And um, he decided to go almost vegetarian uh, a few years ago. And uh, his cardiologist uh, diminished his, uh, his medicine after two, three years. And even his cardiologist said, well, you know, I've never seen this. This is all, maybe one in in 10 years that I diminished the medicine for cardiovascular disease to one of my patients, but he still did because he felt confident that my dad was feeling better. So there and is- what, what do you recommend to start with? Anything, just start. Anything. You have to start, start, start at any moment. It doesn't matter what you do, just do. It can if be it's walking, like yoga, can be if it's walking, if it's yeah. cycling, if it's surfing, if it's anything, if it's to buy a dog to make you walk every day, just do it. You know, anything is good. There is not a bad sport. There is not a good time. If you do it in the morning, in the night, if you're doing uh, in the evening, at, it's start, start, start is, the, is really the key. Start to eat better. Start to do sports at any age. Uh, anything just start at a level that is good for you because if you start with a too high level it will hurt your shoulders your wrist your bones your knee don't 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 hurt yourself just feel good about yourself feel good the, the good of the activity anything any age sorry i need to answer this so one second yeah. <laughs> it's also to find i think the the right uh, activities if it's something you like you will most likely do it in the long term. So don't put yourself, if you don't like fitness, for example, don't go to or don't buy like a subscription at a fitness uh, club. Doesn't make sense. Like find something you really like. I think it's the, the most important things because you will continue to do it on the long term. Um, thank you. We are four minutes uh, before the end of this workshop. So I, I just wanted to say to some people, uh, Amalia uh, Kirali, who's been asking some help about uh, finding a new job. Amalia, if you want to go to 15 Tech, that's exactly what we can provide. A network of people can help you ask your questions. Uh, but it was a little bit off topic today, so I didn't pick your question. Um, many people reacted, Marion, to your idea of uh, building a list and saying that it's uh, difficult to, to manage having many, many lists. So I think it was super good advice to say, put everything on the same list, personal stuff, professional stuff, and, and I mean, take your personal stuff maybe as a high priority to not leave them always at the end of the list. Yeah, because um, it's all the things that people do, like we leave it at the end of the list and if we have time, we do it, so. Yeah, and for very, very busy people like we are, I think it's a very great uh, advice. Uh, another great advice that, um, that Lucilla has provided is like, uh, Take, well, just be who you are. You're not perfect. 
uh, you might hate your kids at some point, you might uh, hate your husband at some point, you might uh, hate doing sports <laughs> exercise at some point, that's fine, that's a, just accept who you are and uh, feel okay about that. Use the community people to, to help you, uh, to encourage you to also steam out, I guess, because it's always nice to be able to speak with people about uh, your angers, as you said, Lucille, like uh, uh, you hated the pandemic situation. So yeah, thank you for you know giving all these uh, good tips about uh, you don't have to be a robot, you don't have to be a machine, that's fine. Uh, and we are not, so that's, uh, that's a great start. Um, please leave some comment in the chat, tell us uh, how you enjoyed it. We love the little love words. Um, that's uh, always a pleasure for us to, to welcome you. We'll have another session um, this week about um, still this uh, well-being topic, which is very important for us, especially after what we went through. So it will be with uh, Anna Feldman, she's a co-founder of a company called Kidado, and they specialize in finding kids' activities. So during this time where we have stuck a lot with uh, our kids, it's, uh, it's nice to have tips. And uh, just as you do, uh, you did, uh, Lucille and Marion, finding new ways to give your advice, uh, uh, your video, live video, a broadcasted video. Hannah and her team have been providing a lot of tips for parents to get their tips busy. So if you want to register, go on 15 Tech and website and you can register to this event as well. And we have some more next week, probably with Victoria who was here um, with us today asking some questions. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again, girls. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much, Gail. Merci beaucoup. And yeah, go to Lucille uh, website to get the programs. Um, Maybe we'll get a special discount code for you. Uh, I will discuss with this lady to, to talk to Marion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to Marion if you want to get the guys. I know they're written in French, but um, you have a super nice recipe. I'm there soon in English, probably. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and video, etc. So don't hesitate. I'll give you, uh, send you an email about that. Okay, bye now. Thank bye. you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye.